Well, we're here in Lockhart River today because we desperately want to push the message that vaccines are important and right now vaccines are urgent. And we have no greater priority at the moment than protecting our First Nations people. And when we look across the border to the Northern Territory, it's a sobering reminder of the need to get our communities vaccinated. Now, we don't have data for all of the Indigenous communities, all 17 of them across Queensland, and that's been an issue of concern for me for some time. And I've continued to ask for that data because if we get it, we can measure it and we can lift performance. And some of the communities that I've been into and some of the feedback we have got about the low vaccination rates are a cause for concern. But I've come to Lockhart River because this is an example of a community that managed to find a way. And they found a way because of good information, good access and good leadership. What do I mean by that? Well, um, early on in the piece, this uh, bloke beside me found a way to instill in his community a sense of belief that vaccines matter. So they got good information out there early in the piece. They got good access out there early in the piece. They went door to door. They found a way to partner with anyone who had any interest in delivering the service to the community to get out and do it. And good leadership came in the form of Wayne Butcher, who was the first in this community to roll up his sleeve. And um, I won't weigh too much into the politics of that, but isn't it refreshing to see a leader want to take uh, a role and get vaccinated early rather than finding excuses not to? And the difference that has made here uh, is light years apart. And if uh, our local figures uh, are anything to go by, the Mayor tells me that today they've just gone past 80% first dose. That's a figure that any Queensland community should be proud of. For a remote Indigenous community to have that achievement is amazing. So this is a blueprint. Let's pick it up. Let's wrap it up. Let's roll it throughout Queensland. Let's get our First Nations people vaccinated. That's the greatest gift we could give communities ahead of Christmas. Over to you, Mr Mayor. Yeah, thanks, thanks, um, David, for visiting Lockhart community today. Um, I know you, you were here a few years ago, so it's great to touch base again. Look, we can't, um, I guess, say how important it is um, for our people to get vaccinated against COVID-19. Um, the reality is, COVID here to stay, and COVID um, one day is, is going to um, arrive at our doorstep. And um, I, I think it's the only defence we have against um, COVID for First Nations people is the vaccine. Um, we're struggling with a lot of underlying health issues and as it is today. Um, so I think it's very important uh, we, we cannot afford COVID to enter our community. It certainly will, in, in, and I think it's just gotta, we've just got to get vaccinated because that's, a, that's our best defence against COVID. Mm. Yeah, look, I, I, we're always going to have people that are always questioning, um, uh, you know, the, the, the vaccine, and we've seen a lot of that out there in the, in, in social media. Um, but you know, I, I always tell people if you if you um, if you're a crook, you're not going to go to the mechanic, are you? You, you? you know, and if you need a second opinion, you're not going to go to the electrician either. So, I think it's important to understand you got to go to the doctor. And um, and I think that's a, that's science has proven the fact that vaccine has worked and the vaccine is the best defence we have against COVID. Obviously, you guys are doing such an amazing job. You know, eighty percent. What, what's the actual figure? Sorry. Yeah, first jab. Um, we're I think we're right on eighty percent right now. Um, from this is coming directly from our local uh, primary healthcare centre, and and uh, our second jab is up there um, nearly seventy percent. So about eighty sixty eight percent. Um, we're comfortable that um, by December 17 we we should be um, double vax at 80 percent, and um, first even the first jab may be up there in, in the mid to the late 80 percent. What are you putting that success down to? Is it, you know, having that relationship between the communities? Yeah, definitely. I think the 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 the, 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 the foundation we had is we, we had a great relationship between the primary healthcare centre and the community, and we got some really good workers who are great leaders in in the health forum there. And um, they've led that. They've led that. Um, led that very well. And um, as leaders, we um, we've all um, we've all uh, I roll up to sleep, and 
of your social media to our advantage because 60 percent of, 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 of the um, local young people are uh, follow me on Facebook so I was the first one to roll up the sleeve even though I was actually isolated at, at the house because I was in Cairns when the outbreak with the, um, the pilot that time so I came on and on you roll up the sleeve got the first jab so um, and, we, and the three days the last day was raining a lot in Lockhart um, but we still got over 100 people that day. So. And what are your thoughts on, I guess, the, the data for Indigenous communities not being publicly released? Does that help the cause? Look, I, I think all Indigenous communities uh, are different and, and unique in their own way, and I think that's that's a challenge within itself. I've spoken to a lot of leadership throughout Queensland with the 17 Indigenous shires throughout Queensland, and... Um, there are you know, some that are doing really well and some that are not doing so well. And unfortunately, um, there are too, too much misinformation out there on social media. Um, and the younger generation, um, I guess, you know, uh, uh, are the ones that are, are a bit standish on, on the vaccine. So, um, but I think slowly they're making headways. But uh, I think it's important to remember that 17th of December is when the borders will open in Queensland. and and um, we're looking figures in Northern Territory now. Um, it's starting to sneak into the Indigenous communities there, and I think all I can do is encourage people to get vaccinated. Um, mm. um, mate, I wanted to ask you, changing topics mm. uh, from vaccination to alcohol, mm. um, tell me about the plans for the tab. Yeah, look, since since the induction of the AMP, I mean, it was it's a more of a, of a provision style approach. And one thing we know for a fact that provisions never work anywhere in the world, let alone it's going to work in a little remote community like Lockhart River. So we've seen binge drinking becoming a, a real issue in our community amongst the younger generation um, over the last 10 years. So it's shifted the pattern of drinking from socialising to binge drinking in, in, in a very harmful way and so we've decided over the last few years the communities to build a social hub you know you can't call it a canteen or a pub anymore so you gotta we're, we're building a social hub and the social hub is all about educating the next generation around you know changing the habits of people around sociable drinking rather than you know going out and getting a heap of grog bringing it in you got to drink it before the police gets it off you or you got to drink it before the rest of your family kind of going to drink it on you, but we want a place where people can go and have a few beers, a um, few, few nights a week, um, and socialise, you know, play a game of darts, play a game of pool, watch footy on television, watch a live band on a, on a Friday night or something, or a Saturday night. You know. And I think when the wet season arrives, the rivers will go up and no one can drive out and get alcohol, so it's, 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 the town's always, you know, January, February, March, the best time of, you know, in Lockhart River. Uh, we're hoping that, that during that period, people will get used to going down and having a few beers, you know, three or four nights, and, and be able to still, still get up and go to work next day and then and go and have a beer again. You know, I think that kind of you know, changing drinking behaviour pattern will, will, is what we're looking for into, into the future. You know? Yeah, and what's the, uh, the, the response been like? Do you feel like um, the state's open to sort of relaxing those, like that hard? I think they're looking for answers, and I think this is probably one one solution to to the AMP. Um, but um, it's, it's finding the investment to to create that social environment has been the challenge. So we've self invested here in, in our community, and I guess it's self investment to look at how we can you know, kind of investment in really our people's health in the future because we all know the effects of of, of binge drinking. You know. Colleague Anna, on um, the mayor of Morrison Island, he's been really vocal about this. Have you guys sort of um, been in discussions? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've been mentoring a few of those uh, new mayors on the scene, and, and Kyle's one of them who's young and very energetic. And um, <laughs> Kyle's very young and energetic, and uh, I think it's about how you steer that energy in the right direction, you know. Can you run us through some of the specifics of the proposal? Like, so what is it? So yeah, yeah. They, well, what what we the the shire can't or the council can't hold a license or can't run a 
a, a pub or a social club. So what we've done is we've just invested in the facilities to build it into a good social hub. And now the, the Lockhart River Social Club, so the community's established their own business now, and they've going to lease the building off us, and they're, they're, they're negotiating with the... Um, with the liquor license around the hours and with Queensland Police and the local justice team as well because they've got to sign off on the, the whole thing at the end of the day. So um, they're looking at um, 25 hours a week. Um, so they're looking at probably Wednesday to Saturday nights where they're going to have four or five hours um, with a limit of I think seven to nine cans or something. I'm not actually involved there, but um, but yeah, of mid strength or light beer. And we've got a new built kitch kitchen built in there too as well so um it, it um so there will be food available on the premises as well and people from outside you don't have to go into the premise to get food you can duck around um, there's an excess for the public as well <laughs> yeah. yeah well two things i find in communities bring our people together one is culture so when we have dance festivals and arts festivals um, you watch the community just come together as a whole, and the other is sports. So you know we're investing in a and, and sports is good for bringing good for the community morale, bring for bringing the people together, but it also is a healthy thing. So um, yeah, we're looking, we're looking forward. We're just laying out the turf at the moment. Um, there's lights going, LED big lights going up, and scoreboards and. So it's right next to the social club, so you'll be able to have a beer and watch footy live. <laughs> cool. Um, and yeah, just back to the vaccination. Yep. Um, I guess what tips would you give other Indigenous communities to, I guess, really boost their rates? Yeah, I, I think what we all got to remember is we all, most of our Indigenous communities live in an overcrowding situation. So it's about caring for others. Um, you might be young, you might be fit, and you, yeah, you might, you might, you might go through a COVID case. But remember, you've got to go home. You just got to remember who's at home. Your children are at home. Your parents are at home. Your grandparents are at home. So the most vulnerable are at home, and you've got to share that same house with them. So don't be sh selfish. Think about someone else. I think the state government needs to listen to whatever local leadership um, or whatever the local community um, strategies are on the table. Um, as we said, they're very, we've gone door to door um, and that works very effective for us. Um, other communities might be able, be able to do that, but if they need to bring um, superstars or sports stars or movie stars in, in to support and assist, you know, please do so, I think. But, Importantly, to listen to the leaders and, and, the, and the local leadership and strategy that they have. Uh, it's hard to say with the other communities because um, I've been really focused on lockout. You know that that uh, now you kind of hit that 80 percent. I feel a lot comfortable. I actually I'm double vax, so I feel comfortable going. I need to go to Brisbane to do to to do business. I need to go to Canberra, and I need to go to Cairns. So you know I, I feel comfortable transiting now knowing that I'm double vax. Yeah. Thanks for your time for the much Thanks for your leadership, Mr Mayor. And to all the mechanics, we will listen to you for car advice. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just following off Wayne, um, yeah, what other, I guess, tips could, you know, he sort of help the others? Well, well, he summed it up perfectly, and that is that with the right leadership, and if you get the access to go with it, and a bit of confidence, we can get this show back on the road. But we have to be honest with ourselves and reflect on the vaccination figures in some of our First Nations community. And if you couple that with overcrowding and poor health um, in some people heading into it, it is a cause for concern. And what we've done to date hasn't worked, so we have to change gears. And the wake-up call we're getting from the Territory at the moment shows why we have to change gears. So let's work with every community. Let's improve access. Let's improve the messaging in there. So that might mean uh, Indigenous health professionals going in the community, going door-to-door. -door. That might mean uh, people who are uh, 
um, credible in the sporting field. Whatever it takes, let's find community by community, but let's lift these vaccination rates in First Nations communities. Otherwise, we're going to look back on this period and know what a huge mistake we've made. And I don't want to be partly responsible for that. And that's why this is important that we sell this message. All of us, all sides of politics, um, all backgrounds, all beliefs, let's get this happening. No, and um, yeah, unfortunately it's been clunky. In some parts we've seen uh, communities only have windows of one day a week for a couple of hours to get the vaccine, uh, where there are trusted health professionals in the community who could have administered it. Those things are mistakes. Uh, I've heard in other communities where they've had information days where that hasn't been able to be coupled with Queensland Health to have a mobile clinic there on site. They're, they're missed opportunities. Now, we haven't uh, waved our arms and made... Um, uh, you know, try to make political hay out of that because this is far too important. What it is, is an opportunity to know that we can lift vaccination rates and this place proves it. It's a blueprint for the model that works. Better information, better access, better leadership. Put that across the board and it's the sweet spot we can find. Um, just wondering about your take on, we've just had like massive um, so-called freedom rallies in Cairns and mm. um, I think Brett Olds Party. Yeah. Um, and what, what, what are your thoughts on, on um, sort of members of the LNP like George Christensen and, uh, and Matt Canavan sort of being uh, opposed or sort of vehemently opposed almost yeah. to, to like the latest kind of mandate? I, I know there are different views, but I, I share one that it's vaccination that will ultimately get us back to a life of normality. And I just won't walk away from that because I know vaccines matter. And if you believe in the small and family business at the end of the street and the young kids they employ, go and get vaccinated. If you believe in wrapping your arms around your loved ones at Christmas time, go and get vaccinated. If you believe in protecting the most vulnerable in a community like this, go and get vaccinated. And if we all sell that message, um, we can put this behind us because we're better than the way that we have had to live as a nation and a globe. And we shouldn't live on our knees. Uh, we should live as a proud, safe people and uh, vaccinations are the key to do that. And I've never sought to say anything other. So is the, the state government double jab entry, is it, is it going too far, is it too tough? Now we've, uh, we've asked practical questions about that. And I think that's the responsible course of action that we need because we've got people on both extremes and what needs is a dose of reality in the middle about what it means. So I've had uh, a heck of a lot of queries from small and family business owners about what are their rights and their responsibilities. Um, I've had the same of, of people who work in those businesses. I've had coppers call me to ask what does it mean for them in the policing of it. Now these are practical questions that still haven't been answered and I think that's the mature and sensible way to handle this um, because um, we owe it to those people who have done the heavy lifting throughout this and I'm sorry but it's been small and family business and their staff the whole way through. Every time there's been a decision on by government throughout the pandemic it's always been dumped back into the lap of small and family business and no one else has been there in their corner so that's where I am and I, I believe in small and family business and I believe in their employees and I feel the pain of the young casual staff member who throughout this pandemic has lost shifts uh, because of decisions of government. And if there are decisions taken for greater health good, well then you've got to take those people on the journey. And that's the space that I've sought to play in the whole way through. So you oppose that mandate? Like no, no, we've, we've, we've asked practical questions. And I think, that's, I think that's fair and reasonable. We've asked questions about how that relates to small and family business, about how that relates to their staff, about how that relates to the law enforcement of it. Now, um, they're questions that remain unanswered. And um, they're the same questions that the small and family business sector are asking, the same questions that the, the representatives of the hoteliers and the clubs and the restaurant and caterers and the Chamber of Commerce, they're, they're, they're all those questions that haven't been answered. And I think we owe it to, to those people to ask those questions and how they practically relate to them. Um, look, I've seen the argy-bargy. If the government insists on a more expensive type of test, well then Queenslanders will insist on the government footing the bill. And that is a reasonable request. So I'm not, 
I'm not privy to what the health advice is that the Premier is relying on that says um, she prefers one test over another. But if that's the decision, the fair and reasonable way is to say to those coming into Queenslanders that the government will foot the bill. And if that decision was taken, it would remove all the politics from it. Now, I'm, uh, it might suit people's agenda to stand up and try and play politics and talk about safety and all manner of things, but these are practical things. And the practicality is we don't want to have a nation divided. We want to have clear, decisive actions. And if the government insists on one type of test over another, foot the bill and Queenslanders will come on the journey. So will the tourism sector. Oh, um, uh, well, um, people will ask questions why someone can commit a similar offence in Queensland and walk away scot-free but go to the slammer in New South Wales. And I want to know that Queenslanders are protected by the best laws, not the weakest ones. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, mate.